I'm an alcoholic. My name is Bill. And uh, I'm in the Central Hudson Valley right now. I first time I came into AA, it was in New York City, where I had been uh, arrested for drunk driving. I couldn't get out of it uh, since the car that I had hit was an off-duty police car. And uh, I was so drunk that I actually thought I'd pass the breathalyzer. So I was arrested, and uh, and to try to beat the rap, my uh, lawyer told me maybe I should go to AA. And so since I certainly didn't want to throw any conviction on my record, I went to my first AA meeting. And I had no intention of getting sober, and I will say that I really didn't get sober, but I didn't drink for the next three or four months. And people were bothering me. They said I had to buy this big book, and I had to buy a 12 and 12. So I did that, and then people kept on telling me I had to get a sponsor. So at one meeting, I noticed one very mild-looking man there and who didn't seem to be very you know, pressure-filled or anything. And I said, would you be my sponsor? And he said, sure, I'll be your sponsor. And he proceeded to lay out some things, which I ignored. And I think we went to about two meetings together. And I really couldn't have cared less. But people would say, you're the sponsor. And I went across the room and said, oh, yeah, John's my sponsor. Well, half measures avail of nothing. I can tell you the 10% measures get you nowhere either. And after about four months, uh, opportunity and obsession crossed, and I really would have sworn that I only went to the bar to check on the football pool. But when my favorite bartender asked me if I really wouldn't rather have a double bourbon, I certainly agreed with him. I really would rather have a double bourbon, and I got drunk. And in the words of Bill Wilson, I did not draw a sober breath for the next six years. And when I finally came crawling back into the rooms of AA, uh, I wanted to do everything differently. I wanted to do it right this time. I crawled into my first meeting on a Saturday. I came in early. The man was sitting in the meeting up, looked at me, and said, you knew we're coming back. And I said, I'm coming back. And he said, oh, you know what to do then? Sit down and shut up. And I could do that. And so I needed a sponsor. So I started to look and notice the men in the meeting who seemed to have what I wanted. And I narrowed it down to three or four people. And I started to ask other people, what do you think about uh, Bryce? What do, you, what do you think about Tom? What do you think about Nick? And people say, like, oh, he's a nice person. He's easy going. He's nice. Oh, he's a nice guy. Good long-term sobriety. You know, just do what he does, and everything will be fine. But about one person I got warned several times, and he said, watch out for Big Book Nick. He's going to have you eat in the Big Book. Go watch out for him. So, since I was determined to do everything differently this time, I walked up Big Book Nick after one of the meetings. I got all my courage together, and I said, Nick, would you be my sponsor? And he turned to me, and he looked at me, and he looked me up and down, and he said, why? And I was asking, but what, what, what do you mean, why? Why should I sponsor you? I, I've got a job. I've got other sponsees. I've got a wife. My wife's got her own business. Why should I sponsor you? I, I honestly didn't know what to say. And so I fell back on something that I've been hearing about in the program, which is honesty. And I said, because I want to get sober. He said, well, that's a good reason. I like that reason. Okay. Because now I've got conditions. And I'm like, oh, God, conditions. He said, you're going to pick a time of day. And with my agreement, you're going to call me at that time of day every day. No exceptions, no excuses. If you don't get me, tough, call back. But you're going to call me first at that time. I was like, no, I've got my notebook out and writing down. Okay, I can do that. He said, now, send me a meeting list. I'm going to indicate which meetings you can go to and which meetings I don't want you to go to. I said, all right, I can do that. And he said, now, how much time do you have? I'm going to talk in about three weeks. He said, fuck, you're not saying a word in the meeting other than your name and that you're an alcoholic until you've got 90 days. All right. And he said, fourth, we're going to sit down together. We're going to go through the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And you're going to do the steps as they are outlined in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm not going to tell you to do anything that's not in the book, anything that I haven't done. I don't want you to do anything that's not in the book. In fact, I don't want you to go to step in. Because they use the 12 and 12. I want you to do it out of the book. I agree. And big book Nick comes across as very, very harsh and strict. But he really wasn't. And uh, if that was 17 years ago, I call, I chose 11 o'clock in the morning to call big book uh, Nick as my time to call my sponsor. I have called Nick at 11 o'clock in the morning Every single day for the last 17 years. I've gotten him most of the time. Sometimes, after, I call back two or three times. After about 12 years, he would actually call me back. The first time he did that, I didn't know what to say. I said, what are you doing? You're calling me. Well, I missed your call. I figured I'd give you a call back. 
I got involved in service on the local area level in Elwa as delegates from the area. Nick never did. Nick just stayed sponsoring people the entire time and only now started to get involved a little bit in the intergroup and local level. And funny thing is, he now calls me every so often to ask me for my opinion on what to do. And so, while Nick has remained my sponsor, I've sort of become his service sponsor, too. And Nick has gone well beyond being a sponsor to being one of my best friends and one of the best people I know, one of the most trustworthy people I can ever imagine. Thank you.